Hello, okay. fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Here I am celebrating 13 years with you. Thank you so much to everybody who's joining us. This is a very, very big moment for me, very exciting. I have lots of announcements, but I also have friends here. So come close to me when you're talking because I'm wearing the, the, the mic. <laughs> and introduce yourselves, please. You go ahead. Hi, I am Susan Farmer, and I have loved Nadia for years. Aww. She brought me astrology. And, I... and now you are an astrologer in your I own right. I am an right. astrologer, yes. Yes. In my own right. I give sessions and love it and do videos on Facebook and all of it. All the fun stuff. All of it. Yep. And now you're... I am Rob Barnes, uh, astrologybyrob.com. Um and have been fans for a while and I just let uh, Nadia know today like even my daughter is a fan oh thank you what's your daughter's name <clears throat> Mackenzie Barnes Mackenzie Barnes hi, hi Mackenzie so, I'm sending you big hugs yes. big big hugs we're at the NCGR conference in Baltimore right now and so I we are sending Mackenzie everybody is I'm sure yes yes and you guys know Andy? Come here, oh. Andy. Come here, come here. Yeah. I'm what Andy. am I? I'm, I'm interested. So this is an anniversary party. Yeah? This is a 13-year anniversary Now your party. fans haven't abandoned you. They come back every year. <laughs> now how do you, because you're positive and that works. Yes. So you, you, you like the affirmation. Now how, do, how does that translate? Can people take this advice and use that in relationships? Like I think so. Like, Don't every, you? every week, you know, you come here, you talk for an hour, you, you build people up. Yes. And I'm then you can sure. sort of just go do your thing. And, and they won't bother you, and they'll stay with you <laughs> by your side for... He knows too much about my chart. <laughs> what about your chart just in general, you know, as far as like an anniversary party? Because that's basically what this is. They're yes. Like, we're having a party right yeah. now and announcements, and announcements. we're going to talk about the sky. Yes, I want to share my announcements. Because every anniversary, I always announce something big, and I always have a big sale. And so for the sale, you can go to my soft. website. Yes, I'm selling Andy off to the yes. highest bidder. You're yeah. gonna... You're gonna, Andy will bring in seven figures. Yeah, Andy is amazing. Thank you to everybody who's continuing to join us. Thank you to the people who are joining us on YouTube on the replay, because that's what's happening. So I'm going to very quickly make some very big announcements, and then we are going to talk about the sky, because it is a very, very busy sky this week. So we're going to do like what I always do, but with company, and then some new things where I get to express my gratitude and share some amazing things uh, with you guys. So every year, September 1st, 24 hours, there is a 24 hour sale, big anniversary sale. It's a once in a year event. And that is going on right now on my website, NadiaShaw.com. And this year there's lots and lots of specials. Uh, lots of things are half price. All the specials, all my webinars are half price. Uh, my pendant, my uh, silver plated pendant that was so popular last year is back in stock. And so that is one thing as well. But I also have a very big announcement. And these guys know, these guys have seen. So excited. And this is so, so exciting for me. It is such a big moment for me. I, you know, it's, yeah, right? Like a pointer sister, right? I'm so excited. Can you sing? Will you sing for us? I, I'm not, I can't. I can't no, you've got to sing. Hey. Will you sing. How are you going to mention? I'm, 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 I'm excited. I'm excited, but I can hide it so very excited. well. But, uh, I'm so excited. There we go. I just can't hide yes. it. Thank you. That's exactly how I feel right now, honestly. I feel that exactly. So uh, what it is, is uh, something very near and dear to my heart, something that means so much to me. Um, it's like really a dream come true. My life is a life that in some ways is better than anything I could have imagined for myself. But in a lot of ways as well, it's like the dreams I had to see them become reality because of you guys, like you guys as my friends and fans making my dreams real. It just means the world to me. So I am so excited to announce on my 13th full-time astrology, my 13th anniversary of uh, my website and all of that that my second book is going to be coming out this year and this is my second book there we go can you see it Yay. There we go. thank you thank you so my second book because i know the lighting can be a little weird here but don't worry so it's called the body and the cosmos exploring our interconnection to the sky and this book um it is so me because 
For one hand, um, what I do and, and what I've always felt is that I want to contribute something unique in terms of what I do, in terms of what I put out there. And so with my first book, Astrology Realized, what was unique was the historical and philosophical exploration of astrology that you find at the middle of the book. And that book is has been out for a few years. It is on um, Amazon now. This book, I feel, is also unique because what I do is I connect the ideas of Plato in Timaeus to the astrological sky. And so the nerd part of me is out, uh, but we explore in this, we go through each and every sign and talk about the, the spiritual and philosophical and physical connection that each sign shares. And each section or each sign is also including exercises and meditations as well to help you to tap into that part of you. And so this is uh, very near and dear to my heart. This is the tentative cover. I'm working with the same artist as the last time to make the uh, new final cover, but this is the tentative cover right now. It's called The Body and the Cosmos. Not either. So The Body and the Cosmos, is that like a, what kind of rating is this? Is it an all ages book? Or, or yes. Or connection with the well the language might not be suitable for four-year-olds maybe they won't like feed into right. it as much but yes it is not explicit I, I don't know. I, okay that's what I was wondering about yeah and I understand why he's saying that because he's got a lot of Scorpio energy and he knows that Scorpio energy can speak about explicit things I am not so inclined right I'm more poetic right I'll speak of things a little bit more poetically but uh, but yeah so uh, this book the body and the cosmos. So what's what's going to be happening with this is that uh, it is available for advanced sale. Advanced sale only for the month of September. It is going to be October 1st that uh, the, the final number, the final advanced sales are going to be sent off to the printer and advanced copies are going to be sent out by Halloween of this year. If it is that you're not so into the advanced sale, that's okay because this book will be on Amazon on December 8 is when it will be available on Amazon. If you do get the advanced sale through my website, well, you'll get a lot of gifts. You'll get a lot of presents to go along with it for my gratitude for being one of the very first to buy the limited edition advanced sale copy. Uh, you are going to get a set of meditations, audio download meditations that are for each of the 12 signs, so 12 audio downloads so that you can in your own time close your eyes and meditate be guided on a guided meditation uh, for each of the 12 uh, signs that uh, will sell for 1995 that will be free as a gift the pendant that i have on my website right now uh, that is silver plated that sells for 995 you will also get that as a gift you will get a signed copy of my book and you will get a thank you card written by me as well with your name on it that says hey christina thank you wishing you love all of that good stuff okay so i will send you a handwritten card uh with a really cute cover that i promise you so i hope that you'll love that and cherish that as well so lots of free gifts if you want the advanced copy and you can go onto my website right now nadiashaw.com there's lots of big big sale things happening right now specials uh, my special horoscopes are half price and this book advanced copy of the book is available right now thank you guys thank you for making this possible thank you for for just being a part of me living an amazing life and uh and to me like i don't have children i have biggie now i don't have children i have always felt that uh books are a way to be immortal like really it's like after i'm i've left this body and moved on to the next incarnation my books hopefully will still be here and my books uh will continue to inspire astrology students um and will will make my descendants proud and so books are so deeply meaningful to me. So to have this, uh, to share this with you, it just means so much to me. So thank you. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. And these guys are here to celebrate with me. Thank you guys. Okay, so now we'll come back to that. But now let's talk about the astrology this week. So we're going to do the astrology. This is going to be this week's video scope for everybody out there. And, uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the mic off we'll go around okay why don't we start with Susan okay Susan there are a lot of amazing things happening this week right should yes. we go day by day how about we, we do, do that yeah so we're gonna go day by day so that each of us 
can give our insights and that way also you guys get to see how it is that astrologers think and how it is that different astrologers have their own their own way of interpreting things as well okay i'm just setting this up there we go so we all see that and you guys know andy you've seen andy before you know how brilliant an astrologer he is as well yeah that's true too <laughs> right brilliant and insane and and love and hate and joy and sorrow and, and it, yellow it's highlighted the yellow and green and yellow and green they're, similar, they're a lot they're, closer than we realize sometimes but that's the that's the journey we've ch we've chosen in this lifetime that is the human experience that is the world we've created right what is the yellow chakra what is that exactly is that like the, the okay no that's like just so what i do in my notes so what he's looking at is this and so you may notice there's highlights here and basically what i like to do is whenever there are uranus trines i highlight those because i think of those as lucky days and so whenever there's a uranus trine i try to do something on that day present something announce something whatever because i feel like that really is very fortunate quick moving energy and it can get the message out there right. so today as we are recording right, right now we are experiencing the energy of Mercury trine Uranus. So that is the energy for the start of the week. So that's why that's yellow. And I have something else highlighted here in green, and I'll talk about that a little bit later uh, in just a moment, because that I feel is connected to the recent Mercury retrograde, interestingly, in my opinion. So we'll talk right. about that as well. So let's start let's talk about sunday for depending on where you are on the planet it could be a day uh, on either side depending on where you are on the planet and you may feel this a little bit earlier but as we are entering this week right around sunday we've got two big things happening mercury trine uranus and venus trine saturn now as i said with mercury trine uranus i love that energy i feel like that's great for announcements and messages and social media posts that you hope will reach a lot of people Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for the love that's continuing, I appreciate it. And Venus trying Saturn is just really nice for helping us to have that big picture in love and in money. But Susan, you, earlier you were saying you see Venus as self-worth. So let's start with Sunday. Mercury trying Uranus, Venus trying Saturn, how do you interpret that? I would see a lot of, um, like, like you said, you're talking about communication and big announcements and, you know, the lower side of that can maybe be some outbursts a mm -hmm. little bit. So if you're if you're feeling frustrated or agitated, you want to go to the higher quality of that and get really deep about what you're feeling because Venus is involved as well and Saturn, which can bring things that you've worked for, especially in self-worth, like a really deep with self-worth. And Venus is is such a major player these past weeks and coming up, you know, she's touching all of the planets in a really small window and so when that happens there's a gambit of all these feelings and attributes and what do i love what do i don't and maybe a little confusing so something you've maybe really worked for could come about in unexpected ways with that uranus mercury as well something that you've loved and tried to go after you know and it could just even be like that self-love you're working for especially in Virgo because you're trying you're like constantly trying to perfect it or go after it and look at it analyze it now this next one I think is perfect for Andy and that is Sun <laughs> conjunct Mars oh, I yeah. think that Andy has a lot of that Mars energy that strong forward energy and so you will be wonderful to talk about this some conjunct mars what do you think is happening on monday uh, I, I, don't, I don't know anything but your notes and all here's here's basically what's going on you have a lot of mutable planets in the sky right now so mm -hmm. yesterday was a weird deal because you had five personal planets in virgo which is like panic on, as the song goes panic on the streets of london panic on the streets of birmingham any smith fans out there no, they hate it. never mind anyway so but the moon moved into libra now so basically everybody has to take a drink of water so anybody that is getting very stressed out about the virgo stuff and they just just calm down take a drink of water it'll relax you but the big thing is with you have planets squaring each other in their home signs so you have like this mercury virgo energy where you have to analyze and handle things and you have the jupiter in sag energy so yes there's a lot of analysis and there's a lot of stress 
but the actual knowledge and the big picture will come and, and sort of um, reveal itself. But you're not going to see that until around Thursday when um, the moon goes into Thursday or Friday. I don't know, when the moon goes into Sag and goes over Jupiter, because Jupiter is also ruling uh, Neptune, which is opposite all the Virgo stuff right now. So I would think in the right now meaning there would be more about the awareness and analysis and the bigger picture will come later, but I think it's about awareness and once you sort of see everything, you just have to accept the fantasy. Um, you have to accept the vision that you're getting from, from the Pisces Neptune. So there's a lot of very, the chart is not a very flex, I mean, it's a mutable energy, but it's not a very flexible chart right now. So I think basically all the stress that everybody's been going through for the past day or so, now is a good time to basically re, literally rehydrate and, uh, you know, see, so you won't uh, sweat it all out. I'm sorry, I, I know I sort of went on a bit. I don't know if I stepped on anybody's toes, but... <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love that. And I love how you started pointing out that Neptune energy, that Jupiter mm. energy with Venus, because you actually talk about it um, very, very well. And we had an experience about this before uh, where that is overdoing it. And that's also overindulging like emotions and people need to practice a lot of self-care when they're uh, having to look at Venus square Jupiter, Venus opposite Neptune. Uh, you know, Andy, I think you're brilliant. You know that I think that about you. I think that he's one of the best astrologers uh, that I've ever met. And uh, he's my friend and he's amazing. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so then we have Mercury conjunct Mars. Well, we're going to have this triple conjunction, aren't we? So from Monday, we have Sun conjunct Mars, then Tuesday, Mercury conjunct Mars, and then on uh, Wednesday, Sun conjunct Mercury, right? So why don't yeah. you talk about so, these conjunctions? But I, I was looking at the Venus square Jupiter. Everybody wants to talk about Venus square Jupiter. Let's do it. Go for it. <laughs> because I have that in my chart. Ah. And so, yeah, I, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, I've tried to work out and, and figure out in my own life. And so Venus square Jupiter, here's two beneficial planets, but they're at odds. Mm -hmm. And trying to figure out, you know, it, it kind of brings up the idea of a poet writes about love because he cannot love, mm -hmm. you know. And so, but here's two planets trying to figure out this dance of love, if you go Venus and love. And, um, but, they're, but they're still beneficial. They're still, but they have their own intentions. They're trying to do it their own way. And so I like the Jupiter feel for you still shoot for it. You still go for it. You shoot for the stars, you know, you aim that arrow and go for it. And uh, but Mercury, I mean, sorry, Venus uh, just comes down to but but I got to know, I got to know, I got to figure it out. I got to do it right. You know, so here's two different, very different energies that don't really work together but they're still in a little tango. And with all this Venus energy for the last two weeks, it touches everything from Mars all the way through Pluto in two weeks. Mm -hmm. So Venus is gonna go through a lot of experiences and where most of those are Earth signs, it's like, let's, let's make something useful. Let's, what can I show for myself and love by the end of the day? And so since we're all like so fascinated by Venus, let's also talk about the fact that Venus will trine Pluto at the end of the week. Mm -hmm. So how do you interpret that? So after the journey, at the culmination yes, of all the, the different experiences that Venus is going to have, what do, you, what do you show for it? What have you gained? A depth, some insight, some feeling, some I've now experienced something deeper and greater than I have experienced before. That's a lot of energy to, to digest in two weeks. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you're going through the full gamut of things. So it's a deep feeling and it's, it's taking love to another level. Mm -hmm. So how about you talk about Mercury? Let's bring Mercury into the picture. Mercury doesn't always get seen, um, but I, I actually want to just mention this quickly because I did touch on it earlier. So it is gonna be right around Tuesday that Mercury will meet Mars in the sky. This is what astrologers call a conjunction, but it's not just that Mercury is meeting Mars, but there's this, what I'm calling a conglomerate, right? Right now we've got this conglomerate of planets in Virgo. And what is going to happen in the span of just a couple days is that it is going to be Mercury and Mars and the Sun very closely together, traveling together, merging energies, sharing energies. But what is distinct about this is that Mercury meeting Mars 
this has happened twice already as part of the recent Mercury retrograde. Yeah, so it was Mercury left shadow a couple weeks back, so we're not in Mercury retrograde anymore. And Mercury is now in a whole new part of the sky, in a whole new sign, in the sign of Virgo. But I do feel like in some way what is taking place in the early part of the week it's almost as if we take the recent Mercury retrograde and we move a step forward from it. We take the Mercury retrograde recently, that was energy of, of heart and home, and now start to put it into practice. And what are the lessons that we learned of the recent Mercury retrograde and how do we now implement that so that our lives look different? That is what Mercury meeting Mars is gonna help us to do. So that's how I interpret that. But how about you talk about some of the Mercury energy this week? Well, I was looking at that as well because it's the third conjunction. And like you said, it's when they meet in the sky. So the first one happened in June. Mm -hmm. The second one happened in July under the Mercury retrograde. But I think, was it Mercury under shadow with the first one or what? I, I don't recall for sure, I think. It was. And so to me, it's the culmination of these lessons from June, July, like you said, heart and home and being and what is coming now? What can we communicate now? And let's let's go after that. Let's take some action that maybe would be fear-based, but we're going to face that fear and communicate it and go for it. So someone stepped into the room. Would you like to say anything? Okay, no. So we're not going to have any additional <laughs> voices here. Okay, so let's talk about the sun. So this week, the sun. Andy, would you like to talk about, I know that you gave a synopsis of the week. You focused a lot on the moon, but maybe you want to talk a little bit about the well, sun. I mean, everything is sort of driven by the Virgo energy. Come with here. My, what is this? No, is no, this just come. Earth okay, energy. Do I blow into the microphone? No, 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 but just be a little bit closer so that the camera can see you. The camera yeah. loves you, darling. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> i got to, like, lean down. I could give a kind, of, yeah. kind of aggressive look. The earth energy. No, I mean, it, it's basically redundant. What I, so, you know, I mean, it's the sun is in Virgo, but you have Mercury in Virgo. You have Venus in Virgo. I mean, I, I think, like I said, all the mutable energy in a chart, you do want to focus on the Uranus retrograde in Taurus a bit, which is driven by Virgo. So with the mutable energy going everywhere, which we're analyzing and, and sort of seeking and, and trying to absorb everything, um, you know, changing things up a bit by just sort of being still is very important. So sometimes when you feel this sort of, you know, you get the, the awareness overload. I don't know, what's, is the sun, is anything trining? Uh, yes, sun? Saturn trines Saturn. the sun on Friday. Wow. Yeah. But is anything in early Virgo, any, any trines right now going on? So I mean, that's the sun already. Uh, so the Venus is trining the sun. All right, so that's a big deal because Venus is ruling the sun and, and trining the sun. I think whenever you have a planet... Um, Venus is not trining. Venus is conjunct, conjunct, mighty close. Yeah, so it's what not a trine. trine. So well, saying, Venus is trying Pluto, sorry. Well, where is Venus right now in Virgo? So Venus is in Virgo and Venus... Not the sun, I mean Uranus. That's what I was, that's what I was referring Uranus to. is in Taurus. There so you Uranus, are. So I was referring to Uranus. So whenever you have It Venus, all blends and merges. <laughs> that's what Venus comes Which I mean, there's no, no need... Well, no, the thing... But the thing is, there's no need to panic. Mm -hmm. So even if you're trying to overanalyze things, you just stay calm. It just... Even if... It means even if you're wrong, you're honest in Taurus, you just keep... You keep keep on and don't let people... Don't, don't panic and just, you know, keep sticking to the point. So I think that's... Don't let them see you sweat. So I think that's when all the energy is going everywhere this week. I think you're on some Taurus. Um, and so is Venus, is, what's trining? Anything trining? So Venus is trining Saturn at the beginning of the week and then Pluto at the end of the week. Yeah, Pluto's a waste of time. Really? Yeah, it's a waste of time. No, why do you say it's, that? No, it's sensational. We talked about this at lunch today. I'm probably the only astrologer who thinks Pluto is a waste of time. At least not for another 250 <laughs> years until people actually no aware about Pluto for a whole cycle because they were aware about you know Neptune and you were aware about uh, Uranus for a whole cycle and you're able to put some theories and you could apply them to sort of see if they work but Pluto just sounds like a sensationalized explanation of, of Scorpio in the 30s when everybody was sort of looking for something you know so I, I don't I don't like the explanations out there for Pluto they don't they don't really you don't know, be like oh my Pluto or Pluto everybody wants to be powerful and say that no just look at Mars you know just so, look at Mars as yeah. the traditional ruler of Scorpio. Yeah, but like, like what I said before, like, yeah. you know, just be aware of what's going on. It's very Mercury, Mercurial early in the week. And then later on, when you get the moon going into Sag, then all the awareness, then you'll start seeing the big picture reveal itself. And, and Jupiter ruling, also ruling the Neptune and Pisces. Then you sort of absorb the fantasy that Virgo stressed out about. 
you really, I think that Neptune and Pisces, you really have to indulge yourself in allowing yourself to fantasize about things when you, when you do get stressed out about the Virgo energy. So, I mean, yeah, basically, there's not a lot of nuance to the chart. There are a lot of things going everywhere. So if you want to look to something for some stability, look to Uranus and Taurus. It is retrograde for what it's worth. So just, you know, be aware, discover new things, and then, you know, just don't, you know, Virgo wants to panic, but then uh, once, once, once they're aware of how to calm itself down, you know, then they might have some shocking, um, a shocking discovery of how to just sort of chill, pretty much. A shocking discovery of how to oh, chill. Which is mercurial, right? Yeah, this is, a, yeah, and that's a great synopsis to the week. <laughs> a shocking discovery of how to chill. I feel like my life is a series yeah. of shocking discoveries yeah. of how to chill. I really believe that. Okay, so final <laughs> thoughts. Is that your final thought? No, I'm, later on I'll probably go on yeah. for hours and stuff like that. And, and you know. But for now. Bitch and moan about things, but yeah, okay. for now. <laughs> oh, sorry about the explicit language. I, I tend to edit that out in myself anyways. Okay, final thoughts about this week, overall themes, anything that stands out to you? Yeah, taking what Andy said, um, mm -hmm. all that energy. We have even the moon moving into Capricorn at the end of the week. Mm -hmm. And so that puts uh, eight planets in Earth signs. So stuff gets done. Mm -hmm. um, productive. Productive. Yeah. yeah, we're, yeah, everything that we've been working on, there's, there's resolutions, there's things put into place, we move forward, so, and it's nice that it's the sun that trines Saturn towards the end of the week to kind of wrap everything up and say, okay, thank you for the lessons, let's go get it done. Mm -hmm. I have one, one final thought, just uh, Google uh, panic by the uh, Smiths panic on the streets of London, panic on the streets of Birmingham. That's a very Virgo, Virgo energy. People are trying to handle things. That's, that's a good song. And people... And the, the, person, the person in the background I know is, was a, is a, actually is a DJ, and they, you know, they were talking about hanging the DJ in the song. Um, yeah, I was also thinking that there are a lot of people who appreciate your Smith's references. Like, they well, know you, who that you, is. You, They're you, very you, excited. Yeah. yeah, probably. Okay, uh -huh. Susan, final thoughts? about this week's synopsis. What do you love? Well, the way I put it, but that's me. What about you? So I see a lot of things coming into culmination in these next few weeks. A lot of things that maybe we were stressed about, you know, July was a hard month, things that we were stressed about, questions coming into maybe a fruition and an understanding. Virgo's hard and it, I mean, it does want to analyze and and stress out but I also see it as a really grounded like let's get to some answers and not only help ourselves but help other people sign and so I feel like when we tap into that part of it we can we can help as we help others we are also helping ourselves and so we can feel that, you know, as maybe other people come to us to talk or, you know, as an astrologer, people are always coming to talk to me about issues or whatever. And there are many times when I'm speaking with them and I find an answer to my own thing. And I, I think when the earth signs are at play like they are, that comes into play, a really grounded outlook. That's beautiful. These are my friends. These are some of the people that you meet when you come to astrology conferences. I am right now at the NCGR conference in Baltimore. Thank you to uh, you guys. Yes, thank you to everybody who's hosting this amazing event as well. Um, I really do believe in conferences because I feel like when you're an astrologer, sometimes out in your own world, you can feel a little bit like an alien. And so being at astrology conferences feels like home. And that's part of what I love about astrology conferences. And so finally about this week, you know how I like to do it. I always say what I love about this week for us. Well, look, I love all the earth energy as well. I do think it's productive. I am a big fan, as I started off by saying, I'm a big fan of Uranus trines. I always highlight them in my notes of aspects because I always try to present something or just do something that I hope uh, will reach people. And so it means a lot to me that the things that I'm sharing right now is reaching people as well. And what I love about this week also, I'm going to say, I know that there's this, you know, all this Neptune opposition energy and it can feel a little bit ungrounded, but then we have Venus trying Pluto and 
for me, in my humble opinion, I absolutely love that because I feel like that is going to be a connection to what really matters mm -hmm. and to really root our sense of self value in essential qualities. And it is ultimately an understanding that that thing within us that is eternal, that is essential, that we're able to make all that other superficial stuff, we're able to put it in its right place. With Neptune oppositions, it's easy to get caught up in the illusion, right? And the illusion of your life, the illusion of external circumstances, as real as they may feel, they are ultimately there to help us to understand spiritual lessons to help us to grow uh, in some way. We're never going to be perfect. We're human beings. We're here. We're learning. We're messy. We're trudging the road to happy destiny, as they say. But at the same time, sometimes we get these moments of, uh, of insight and understanding of what it is that is true in our lives. And when we get that, it is precious. Hold on to it, run with it, and grow it. And so I'm also going to leave you with saying, and again, thank you to all these wonderful people here who joined me. Um, You're welcome. My book, my new book is coming out very soon. The advanced copy is now live on my website. The advanced copy comes with all kinds of presents. You get all kinds of presents and the advanced copy is a limited edition. So that is going to be shipped out in October. I'll be back home in Canada to vote. And so that is where I will make sure all the shipping happens um, myself. I will make sure, but I'm really, really excited and grateful to have the opportunity to share this with you uh, very near and dear to my heart. And of course, all kinds of big anniversary sales, 24 hours only. Uh, sales are happening right now on my website, NadiaShaw.com. How do you my, find them? Through the newsletter? Sorry, no, I interrupted that's you. That's okay. You it's can find the them on my website right now. Okay. Website. Just go to NadiaShaw.com <laughs> and you'll find them. NadiaShaw.com. Huh? Yeah, that's where it all is. That's where the party... NadiaShaw.com? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's where the party continues. And again, thank you to everybody joining me live. Thank you to everybody on the replay. Thank you for the endless love that you have shared with me for 13 years as a full-time astrologer. And uh, here's to the next 13. Congratulations. Here's to the next 13. Thank you. Yeah. This is my magic elixir that I tend to drink at all my classes when I'm teaching. What's it mixed with, by the way? <laughs> It is what pure. Is, what is the quote? It is elixir? pure. What is what is this that? is the magical elixir. It's yeah. Coke Zero. And is are you going to be able to get that through customs when you go to Mexico <laughs> or no? Um, How many the, ounces? You know what? Less than three ounces? You know what? They actually have Coke Zero in Mexico as well. Yeah. But they don't have the black label. That is more unique oh, the to, black label. to with, north of the border. Well, how does that occur? What's the thing with like the Jack Daniels? Like the black label and the red label? Uh, that I don't you know. know. I wish I could tell you. Thank you, everybody, and thank you for the love and the comments. And again, Bye. I'll be reading your comments on Facebook as well. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you for a great 13. And again, here's to the next 13. Okay. Until we connect again, take care, and it'll be a great week. Enjoy.